spruce tips are really popular. I see people making all sorts of stuff from them, from beer to pickles to jelly. There can be some issues with spruce tips though, since every single species is gonna taste different. I've found that the species of the tree doesn't really matter as much if you're making things with the mature needles. So we're gonna pick some from this guy here. And I'm gonna show you how to make a brine for ham using the needles after we puree them in a high speed blender. We're back in the kitchen at the salt cellar and I'm gonna show you how to make a ham. What I have here is a pork shoulder, and one thing you can do that's easy at home, you can make a ham with a pork shoulder, and it cures in about half the time, and it's really easy. You need to know the muscle that you wanna take out of the shoulder, though, because since this bone has been removed, there is a big cavity here where the bone used to be. So what we want is we want what's called the copa eye. So if you ever have, have had copa ham, dry cured Italian style ham, this is the muscle. It's one complete muscle out of the shoulder that has a really nice shape for making a ham. This is our copa eye. It's that easy. So just to give this guy a really nice circular shape, I'm going to truss it with some butcher twine. We're gonna put our ham in a brine and the brine is gonna be how we cure the ham, but it's also the way that we introduce flavors. So with our spruce needles, if we just put them into a brine and cooked it, you probably won't get too much flavor. But if we use a high speed blender and we break all the needles up in the brine, they're going to release a lot of flavor. Oh, God, it smells good. Yeah, that's perfect. A couple things to know about the ham. It's in the brine now. With this copa eye, we're gonna leave it in there for about seven days. If you're using a larger ham, it's gonna take a lot longer. If you're using a smaller ham, it might take a little bit less. The only way to find out is to do research and look at recipes where people have used uh, a cut that you're going to use and make sure you follow the directions. You also need to make sure to rotate the ham every single day while it's in the brine. Because you can see, like I got this guy pressing up against the plastic here, that part's not going to cure as even as some of the other parts that are directly exposed to the brine. So it's really important to rotate it. And also, if you know something about water that has a lot of salt in it, it makes things float. And if your ham is floating, which it will, it's not going to cure as much on the top as it is the underside that's submerged in the brine. So an easy fix is to take a couple plates and you just weight it down just to, just to keep them under the brine. Easy. Last but not least, it's important to label and date things. I also like to bend over a little corner. Makes it easy to take off the container. Night, night, pig. So our ham has been brining for a week. And this is how I cook it at the restaurant in a hydrovection oven. The hydrovection oven allows me to steam, roast, and smoke at the same time. It's easy to cook a ham like this at home, though. You could cook it in the oven at like 250 degrees with a thermometer until it gets to 150 degrees in the internal temperature. But you wanna make sure to cook it at like a 250 degrees or so because the brine that the ham's been in has a lot of sugar in it and sugar is gonna burn really easily. And after you've been taking care of your ham for a week, the last thing you wanna do is burn it. You can also just cook the ham and kind of steam it 
if you want by putting it in a covered baking tray with a little bit of water and putting foil on the top. Or you could take it outside and smoke it. I like hams with a little smoke on them. I have my ham covered with a little foil here just so that it doesn't burn. But you can see that it's still got a really nice burnished color. And also, I tied the ham and trussed it so that it keeps that really nice circular shape that's going to look just beautiful on the plate after we slice it. The last step is to remove the butcher's twine that's been helping it keep that circular shape. And then we're going to slice it. Oh, she smells good. A little cut just to flatten it so it slices easier. You can see that the cure, it's all pink, so the cure has gone all the way through. So the flavor of this ham is really special. It's very delicate. It's not really something that you're going to just slap onto a sandwich with a bunch of mustard and pickles and cheese because you're not going to taste the flavor of the spruce at all. What it's meant for is just to have kind of by itself, maybe with something that's really mild, like a, a hard boiled egg and a little bit of salad, just so the flavor can be enjoyed on its own. First, what you taste is salt and fat and smoke, and afterwards, the flavor of the spruce will kind of climb into your senses and your, uh, your sinuses. And it's really great, but less is more when thinking about how to enjoy it.